have a deep need to experience continuity and also to uh, have transcendent goals goals that aren't just related to having a bigger car or a bigger house or whatever but something more and also something where uh, by we can judge ourselves to be um, to be doing some good the a to z of isms transhumanism. Most of us would consider the end of the human race as a catastrophe. There are some, however, who will not only rejoice at it, but want to hasten the day it arrives. Transhumanists look forward to a future in which Homo sapiens is superseded by a better, smarter, fitter model, Humanity 2.0. For certain types of heart failure, you can get an artificial heart, which means that if you choose not to have that procedure, you choose to die, which is a, a very different framework, a very different framework for choosing and for thinking about uh, what next steps to take than it was before having an artificial heart was an option, right? So once it becomes part of our solution space, it is something that we have to make choices about. It may sound like the stuff of science fiction, but with Sophia, one of the world's most intelligent robots, it's become a reality. Now we live at a time where we can work with our limited understanding and our limited tools. We can actually work on a continuity of consciousness. We can actually work on forms of transcendence. This is not something that needs faith, it's now something that needs research and effort. If you've created a conscious machine, it's not the history of man. That's the history of God. I think most recently there's been a lot of new uh, cyberpunk, uh, starting in the late 90s with The Matrix, that really kind of put this kind of thinking on the map for a lot of people, made it part of their world. Um, more recently, series like Altered Carbon on Netflix. Um, there's always the same kinds of questions being asked. Do we live in a simulation? Uh, what are the ethics of, of improving humans? 250 years. And I think there's going to be a lot of these kind of things happening where people with a definite opinion about transhumanism and... and um, there will be so many cases where it touches people's lives in a personal way, where somebody uh, important to them will be affected by this, will have a choice to make. Um, and there, thereby it will become part of our society, of our thinking. So quick update here. I have just ordered a Flex Next chip from Dangerous Things, which will be implanted in the back of my hand, or well, actually the other hand that's holding the phone, uh, enabling me to unlock doors and trigger uh, my contact card on phones. So I want to do things. So I, I buy experimental clothing. The stuff is printed with ceramics and supposed to be very hard wearing. And indeed, it, it, it lasts a lot longer than, uh, than the more uh, organic stuff. Um, I try different diets, like I left ketogenic for a couple of months. Right now we're doing intermittent fasting for a couple of months and you know, I write in a journal every day. What do these experiments do for me? So it's part of these experiments. It's just the next thing I'm trying. I really like the effect of when I'm doing a public speaking engagement somewhere to be able to just like give someone my link tree, like all my, my social um, profiles in a gesture, which I think is also a rather memorable thing to do and until everybody has one, of course. There are several kinds of chip. Most are like a little glass capsule, like the size of a large grain of rice. And that's fairly easy. 
you know, there's just the thick big hollow needle and they implant it usually in the web of your hand. It's a good place. Um, and you can get that procedure done in several places. However, I went for a rather more experimental variety because, hey, <laughs> gotta look for that bleeding edge. And that's gonna involve a bit more blood. So they need to make an incision and create a, uh, what is called a pocket. So where the skin is a bit separated from the layers underneath. And then um, using forceps, um, kind of pull it in by its leading edge because it's flexible. So you can't push it. So because it's a bit more involved procedure with a bit more risk, there are very few um, people wanting to do it. The manufacturer is definitely also really um, part of this whole biohacker community. Uh, with a very similar outlook, like, okay, we're going to try stuff and we're going to make it as safe as possible, but we're going to run experiments and learn. And so he does a lot of that. His name is Amal Grafstra and his company is called Dangerous Things. Uh, hi, everyone. Emil Grafstra. Uh, this talk is biohacking. Uh, so what is biohacking? Uh, really, it's a, a term that's evolving. Uh, biohacking uh, involves technologies that are advancing at a rate that uh, allow us to 3D print organic tissues, uh, to develop protocols and uh, methods for hacking the mind and body, and uh, to even, you know, decompile DNA, the, the operating system of life. And this is what uh, the box is like, and it contains a little sachet. This is the chip. So if I want to scan the chip, you can see that the lights start flashing. They'll be flashing through the skin whenever the chip is being read. And that also gives the ability to detect NFC readers. I think I first shared it with my wife, who knows my values and attitude towards life. She's like, okay, well, if you really want to try, and she wanted to know about the risks, like risk of infection or rejection of the implant, things like that. So um, she was uh, caring, but basically open to the idea and a bit worried about the kind of minutiae of, of getting it done. It's very hard to find a person with enough experience and confidence to perform this procedure. And um, so far I've had a lot of no's and maybes. Um, so locally here near my hometown, uh, I couldn't find people willing to do it. You know, they'll, they're like, okay, send me more info. They'll do some research and then get back to me saying, nah, this is, we will find it hard to guarantee that it's sterile. And now there's a new place that we have to reach out to. Um, they're called uh, Stahl and Inked. I believe, steel, steel and ink, um, down in Limburg or southern province. Um, but they're, they're closed today, so I'm, I'm gonna give them a call tomorrow. And I really, really hope that they can do the procedure because I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting it done. Imagine if consciousness becomes something that runs on the cloud rather than just on this sponge right here, um, then potentially we could be having these interactions that we now have with each other, with many other minds at the same time. That would be so amazing. 